Good. So we are still talking about the main themes of Surah Al Baqarah, right? We're trying to connect them in a coherent way so they are interconnected nicely. And this helps us really grasp the whole Surah. Although it's the longest Surah in the Quran, very long, we're actually able to see how the main themes connect together. So we figure it out, we understand it, it becomes easier for us to comprehend. Inshallah. We come to the point where Allah SWT talks about Hajj. What is Hajj in English? How do we say Hajj in English? What's the English word for Hajj? Pilgrimage. Pilgrimage, right? Pilgrimage. So it's a trip that one takes and it has some rituals, okay, but there's a reason behind it. There's a reason behind it. And by the way, every act of worship in Islam, every act of worship, there is a wisdom behind it that Allah wants us to achieve everything. Let's take some examples. So I'll ask you questions. Why do we fast? What is the point of fasting? Allah mentions that in the Quran and we talked about it maybe last week or the week before. Excellent. Taqwa. Yes. When you believe, fasting has been written upon you just like it was written on the nations before you so that you may attain or achieve taqwa. You may achieve taqwa. Very good. I have two gifts to give away today. So you get the first gift. All right? So I'll give it to I'll give it to you now. Why not? Come over here, come. So one of the two gifts that I have today is gone. There's only one left. So you guys get ready. This is the second gift you get, right? Inshallah, well done. Very nice. Okay, let's look at Salah. Why do we pray? What's the main theme? What's the main wisdom? There's a lot of wisdoms in Salah, but what is the main one? We didn't talk about this, so I'm testing your, your knowledge about this. What's the main reason behind Salah? Absolutely, but we want something that is Stated in the Quran. That's why. Uh -huh. To show commitment to Allah. Well, again, that's one of the themes. Yeah. But Allah says something about salah there. Really, that He states it clearly. What is the main theme behind salah? Abstain from the sins. Well, that's one of the fruits of salah. Yes. But it's not stated as why Allah wants us to pray. Inner peace? Well, inner peace is a fruit, but it's not complete. Obedience. Obedience is definitely a great part of Salah, but still, like we want something where Allah says, okay, the prayer is for this, mainly. Okay, so it includes all of, it, all of these things you mentioned and much more, but there is one thing. Well, it prevents from evil, yes, but that's one of its fruits, yeah. Taqwa. Taqwa, yes, but it's not stated in the Quran this way. The reflection of the column or like complete surrender? It does. It does, but <laughs> I'm, like, I'm telling you, my, my, my condition is that in the Quran it says the Salah is for this. It's not. Huh? Well, that's still too general. What is the verse? Give me the verse. Again, we said this is one of the fruits, right? It is true, but I want to... And Allah says, the Salah, Allah says, establish the prayer for this reason. This is in the Quran? Or yes, Quran. in the Quran, yeah. Okay, for those who know, I'll get, get, bring it closer. It's in Surah Taha. Second page of Surah Taha. 
right on the top of the second page of Surah Taha. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي And establish the prayer to remember my name, to mention my name. So Salah is the ultimate form of dhikr, which includes everything you guys said. But that's the primary thing. Like fasting, Allah said, تتقون, so that you may attain the whole. Prayer, الصلاتة, very clear, like statement. الصلاتة, Establish the prayer to remember me, to mention my name, to praise my name. Right, should we try something else? Yeah. Well, the other ones get a bit more difficult because you don't find straight statements about them. We have to sort of distill these. But since we're talking about Hajj, what do you think Hajj is for? Hajj is for what? It's not like there's no clear statement that mentions clearly. But what we can tell from these verses that we're going to go over now quickly and just glean over the whole issue of Hajj. We actually read some of them last week. Okay. So I'm going to read, I'm going to carry on from where we left last time. So Allah subhanahu wa says, الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى والتقون يا أولي الألباب Allah subhanahu wa says commitment to pilgrimage is made in appointed months whoever commits to performing pilgrimage let them stay away from intimate relations uh, full language and arguments during pilgrimage. Whatever could you do, Allah uh, fully knows of it. Take necessary provisions for the journey. Surely the best provision is righteousness. And be mindful of me, O people of reason. And Allah says, لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ النَّشْرِ الْحَرَامِ وَذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ وَإِنْ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الضَّالِّينَ ثُمَّ أَفِيضُوا مِنْ حَيْثُ وَأَفَاضَ النَّاسُ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah says there is no blame on you for seeking the bounty of your Lord during this journey. So if you are traveling for Hajj, you can still do some business. No, it doesn't contradict your Hajj. You can buy, you can sell, you can do business, no problem. As long as you do your Hajj properly. When you return from Arafat, so after you are done the day with Arafat, praise Allah near the sacred place. Fadhkurullah, mention Allah, praise Allah, okay? And praise Him for having guided you, for surely before this guidance, you were astray. Then go forth with the rest of the pilgrims and seek Allah's forgiveness. Surely Allah is all, is all forgiving, most merciful. In Allah says, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ أَوْ أَشَدَّ ذِكْرَ فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ when you have fulfilled your sacred rights, you're done with the acts of Hajj, praise Allah, remember Allah, okay? remember Allah, as you used to praise your forefathers before in Jahiliyyah. Or even more passionately, there are some people who say, Our Lord grant us your bounties in this world, but they will have no share in the hereafter. Some people have a focus on this dunya. And they forget the hereafter completely. But Allah says there's another type of people. Yet there are others who say, Our Lord, grant us good of this, grant us the good of this world and the hereafter. And that's how a Muslim should approach this world and the hereafter. We want the good in this world and the hereafter, both. Because they go hand in hand. They go, Islam does not take us away from this life, by the way. It does not. It doesn't, Islam doesn't want us to hide in some corner. 
or hide in our houses or hide in the masjid. No, Islam says engage with life. And when you engage with life, you can take this life as a bridge to the hereafter. That's how we should treat life, not run away from it. Then Allah says, so there are people who say, grant us the good of this world and the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the fire. It is they, those people, who will receive a heavenly reward for the good they have done. Surely Allah is swift in reckoning. Okay. Now, last verse in Hajj. Allah says, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّانٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلِيهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلِيهِ لِمَنْ اتَّقَى وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعْلَمُ أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Allah says, and remember Allah, and mention the name of Allah. During these appointed days, whoever departs swiftly on the second day is not sinful, neither are those who stay behind till the third day seeking additional reward so long as they are mindful of their Lord. And be mindful of Allah and know that to Him you will be gathered. These are the verses of the Was there a theme that kept coming up? Did you notice a theme coming up throughout these verses? It was repeated at least three times. Exactly. So you get the second gift. <laughs> Okay. Did you notice? Wadhkurullah, Wadhkurullah. Mention Allah, remember Allah. You? Okay. Fuck, thank you. Allah, I run out of gifts, gifts today, we'll leave for next week, inshallah. This is my favorite too. Really? Okay, good, <laughs> So it doesn't say Hajj is for dhikr, but dhikr was mentioned at least three times in these verses. There's a lot of emphasis on it and it shows that Hajj is actually a form of remembering Allah, celebrating the name of Allah, praising Allah. And the beautiful thing is that Hajj is a demonstration of how much you care about Allah. Because you could do remembrance of Allah, you could do dhikr while at home, right? You could sit down and say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, SubhanAllah, Astaghfirullah, you can do this. You can come to the masjid and pray and do the dhikr, right? There's so many forms of dhikr. But with hajj, what do you do? You leave your, your, your home. You leave your family. And you travel. You take a vacation from work. Vacation from everything in this life. So you take yourself out of your life, out of your commitments. You take yourself out of that and you just go. You demonstrate by traveling and by spending all these, you know, uh, you know, all this expenditure, all these expenses, you're actually paying them. And you go to the house of Allah, the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you perform these rituals that are full of dhikr. It's a very powerful form. It shows that you are really devout. Because if you don't really believe in the value of that, why would you go, get, go out of your way and do all of these things? Hajj is not easy. Financially, it's demanding. Physically, it is extremely... Who made Hajj? Who made Hajj? How difficult this is? Physically, it's difficult, especially with about 3-4 million people in the same place. I'm telling you, you really, like, you're really tested. Your patience is, is tested. You will be pushed around. You will be squeezed. And it's difficult to move. And it's, it's hot and you're thirsty and you're tired and the buses, you know, so the buses break down and you have to walk and you have to, sometimes you have to wait for two, three hours. Wait for a bus or another bus or wait for your turn to come so you can move from one place to the other. Patience. So all this is a demonstration that you care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so that's what I had. Now, how can we connect this to the main theme of Surah Al-Baqarah? Again, remind us of the main theme of Surah Al-Baqarah. What is it? Verse number what? Verse number 21 in Surah Al-Baqarah. What does it say? We said that's the central theme in Surah Al-Baqarah. So if we were to create a mind map of Surah Al-Baqarah, this would be right at the center of everything else. And Surah Al-Baqarah branches out of it. It's an offshoot of this main theme. What is the main theme? What does that verse say? Ya ayyuha nasu O humans, O humanity, worship your Lord. Worship your Lord. 
How does Hajj connect to this? One of the greatest acts of worship is Hajj. That's, that's one way you act out your faith and your worship. That's one way, one of the greatest ways. Okay? Now Allah moves on to another aspect. And here's a shift in the theme. There's a shift here in the theme. We have finished already one and a half juz, by the way. One and a half juz. And soon we'll, we'll actually, we'll, we'll reach the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. But because we spent a lot of time establishing the main themes at the beginning, and now we can see the whole surah is just more of an elaboration and explanation. So Allah moves to a new kind of theme. And what is this theme about? Okay, this has to do with the history of Islam. When the Muslims migrated to Medina, and we said they found there the people of the book, who were the Jewish tribes, right? And then the Muslims were trying to get close to them. But the Jewish tribes showed rejection, and they ultimately rejected the message of the Prophet ﷺ. Then the Muslims were instructed to not try to get close to them. Leave them alone, do your own thing. Follow the truth, follow the instructions from your Lord. Don't worry about these people, most, most likely they won't believe because they have seen the truth and they have rejected it. <laughs> now, the situation got political because those, uh, the Jewish tribes, they had knowledge of the scripture. They had knowledge of the scripture. They had the Torah. They had the Torah. So they used to quote, so they used to speak beautiful words that are taken from the Torah and challenge the Muslims with them. So they followed away after the Muslims stopped trying to get close to the Jewish tribes and set themselves apart. Those Jewish tribes started to do what? They took a passive aggressive approach. What is passive aggressive? Passive aggressive approach. This is something by the way you have to be aware of. You know what's passive aggressive? Someone who gives you a smile and he speaks nicely, right? but he's actually conspiring against you, underneath, underneath. They put you in trouble, but in hidden and subtle ways, that's passive aggressive. Like, they never, like, they are never, how can I say, they're never dismissive, they're never disrespectful in your face. They seem to be nice, right? But behind the scenes, they work against you. The Jews. Huh? The Jews. It was, it was these people, yes. I mean, the okay. Jewish, Today, you know, they are doing the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of people who do that on personal, uh, at a personal level. People do that at a personal level, and these are the people you need to be careful of. These are the people you need to be careful of. Why? Because they give you the impression they they like you, they're good, they care for you, but in fact, they're actually stabbing you in the back. They set you up. They put you in trouble. And. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clarifying this issue, this issue for the Muslims now. He's clarifying it and he's describing in a very beautiful way how these people function. Allah describes the situation. And by the way, this branches out from the classification of the three types of people. Believers.